I say that uh, on uh, the part of Mrs. Hemrich, who's our excellent principal here, Dr. McNiff, the superintendent of schools, and Connie, who's a real icon within our Catholic school system of the universal pre-K, and we just saw some evidence of your splendid work, Connie. Mayor, you're very welcome here, and I hope it's not the last of many visits to uh, our splendid Catholic schools. And thanks to all of you for coming. We are basking in the attention given to education. Thanks for that, Mayor. And we are radiant about the emphasis that he's put on universal PK. He's put me on the spot because yesterday was Ash Wednesday, and Jesus told us that we shouldn't blow a trumpet about our good works. But I don't mind bragging about our Catholic schools and especially the magnificent uh, universal pre-K that we got because Jesus also told us yesterday, because it's Lent, to show special love and compassion to those who need it. And does anybody need it more than our kids? We love them. They're our treasure. They're our present. They're our future. And we are single-minded in the love and service that we give them. So, Mayor, thanks for the, for the spotlight that you're shining on education. Thanks for inviting us to be an ally in what we consider to be a, a, a very promising endeavor, right, Tim? We've been, we've been uh, on the front lines of, of before and after school programs and universal pre-K. Uh, our numbers are great, but we're itching to do even more, and we got the capacity and the drive and the energy to do it, and that the mayor has said we want you to be partners in this. I'd say hallelujah, but I can't because it's Lent. So, mayor, welcome, all right? I'm glad you're here, okay? <laughs> How do you top that? <laughs> I, I have to tell you, it is such an honor, an honor to stand here with His Eminence. And uh, Cardinal Dolan, we've become fast friends, and we uh, care about so many of the same things, and we want to achieve more uh, for the people of this city. And this is a partnership that's going to be so important as we focus on pre-K and after school as well. I'd like to note, as I just want to introduce and praise everyone, I want to first say that Cardinal Dolan is sporting the UPK NYC pin, and we want to thank you. It looks, it looks smashing on you, <laughs> simply smashing, and thank you so deeply for your support. You're welcome. Uh, I want to thank Tim McNiff, who is the superintendent of the Archdiocesan Schools, has a, a man with a big job and is a, a friend and someone we're going to be working with closely. I want to thank, of course, as the Cardinal said as we came in, the Cardinal and I were sent to the office by the principal, so I want to thank the principal, Mary Jane Helmrich, for her great leadership in this extraordinary school. Uh, and I want to thank as well uh, Connie McCrory, who is the Director of Early Childhood Education for the Archdiocese, and I was told by the Cardinal is an icon of early childhood education. So. We're here with some of the real experts who are going to be crucial partners in this endeavor. I also want to thank my colleagues from government, Council Member Andy King and Council Member Andy Cohen, for your extraordinary leadership. Uh, you two have been front and center in our efforts to create uh, a much bigger approach to uh, pre-K and after school, and I want to thank you deeply for that. A um, couple of things I want to talk about here. The St. Francis Assisi School, first of all, everyone has been tremendous hosts and, and so kind, and they have such a great story to tell, and I urge you to get uh, more of the facts of this extraordinary achievement. Uh, this is a school that found new strength and new focus when it came to pre-K, and has done it brilliantly. This is really a model uh, that we can learn from and work with deeply. And now if I've got my numbers right, there's 161 kids in pre-K, full day pre-K in this building, 161 kids benefiting from full day pre-K. The school is a great school. It's been serving Baychester since 1921. Uh, it's part of what makes this community great. And now it is building out something that is so necessary for the modern times we live in which is reaching children even earlier, even more effectively through pre-K. Uh, the Cardinal and I had the honor of going to one of the classrooms. I think it's the most fun we're going to have this week. We got, we got paint all over. It. Right, it's like we had, we had to change before we came out here. But uh, we met four- and five-year-olds. And I have to tell you, when you go to a pre-K classroom the, that's being done on this quality level, it's a high-quality pre-K. You see something immediately that's a very powerful sign. The children engage you. They're purposeful. They're focused. They have something to say. One child started counting. There's a, a five-year-old girl started going 1 to 20 right in front of me, as if it was nothing. 
because the pre-K is giving them that strength and that focus and that love of learning. And you can see it instantly when you're in a great pre-K facility. Now, the Archdiocese of New York knows a lot about how to educate our children effectively. And they have been innovators in the realm of pre-K. And that's why they're going to be such important partners to us. They know what everyone who is involved in this effort knows all over the five boroughs, that 90% of a child's learning occurs in their earliest years. Their, literally, their brain development in the years leading up to the age of five. That's the time of extraordinary growth. That's when we have to catch them and expand their ability to learn and really connect them to education. So I have to tell you, given our common views on this subject, given uh, our partnership to reach more and more children, I have to tell you this is uh, an extraordinarily important moment in our effort uh, to build out full-day pre-K across this city. Uh, and the partnership of the Archdiocese will be a crucial part of the equation because they understand full-day, high-quality pre-K is the way to go. Now, I want to note, between the Archdiocese and the Diocese of Brooklyn and Queens, combined in the first round of proposals that we ask for uh, from organizations all over the city, the, diocese, the Archdiocese and the Diocese combined have put forward 1,700 potential seats, 1,700, which would make a huge impact for all those families. And by the way, that's every single year. As we build out our pre-K program, the numbers we talk about are each year, and then they're repeated the next year, and the next year, and the next year. Think of how many children and how many families' lives are improved year after year as we build this out. We've said clearly that we are going to take the resources for pre-K and after school and put them in a lockbox and use them for those purposes only. And we've said clearly we need to greatly expand our pre-K efforts and our after school efforts for middle school kids this year starting this September. And if you want proof that there are people ready to start this September, I give you the ultimate. <laughs> the, the educators who have the space and are ready to go this September to make a difference in our children's lives. Now, uh, the space is one piece of the equation. Uh, the staff is there, too. There's lots of trained educators ready to go. The training, again, the Archdiocese has done a great job training teachers to be effective in pre-K. And we have other great training capacity all over this city. And so when we went through our process to learn how many available sites there were around the city, who was really ready to go, we got 800 different locations all over the five boroughs, 800 locations with a total capacity of 29,000 seats for this September. And that would allow us to meet our goal of taking full-day pre-K from its current number, around 20,000 kids get it this year, to the new number that we've set for September, 53,000 plus. Again, that's 33,000 more kids who will be helped this year, and then repeat again the next year and the next year. The focus is there, and we have crucial partners like the Archdiocese that are going to make all the difference in this equation. So there's really nothing standing in our way except the need for the funding. The enthusiasm here, the staffing's here, the locations are here. What we need now is the funding. And that should not be an obstacle, because we've said it clearly to our friends in Albany. It's time to stop waiting. It's time to stop the delays. It's time to get to action and help us build out full-day pre-K all over the five boroughs and after school for middle school kids all over the five boroughs. It's going to be a game changer for our kids, and we need it now. And with that, we welcome your questions. Uh, Monsignor Sullivan, I apologize. I should have properly acknowledged. Great partner also with so much of what we do in the city, and thank you for your work with Catholic Charities. Uh, you have a lot of fans in city government. I want to let you know that, Cardinal. Okay, let's take some questions now. Art. Uh, Mr. Mayor, and if I may, uh, to your eminence, do you support the mayor's plan to tax those who make over $500,000 a year in order to pay for Your eminence, I think he asked each of us. I'd just like to begin by sure. saying, yes, I support the mayor's plan. <laughs> yes, now, go ahead, your eminence. Uh, listen, all I'm grateful for is that we've got leaders, Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo, who are passionate about this. 
How it's going to be done, how it's going to be funded, I leave it up to them. I'm just grateful that it's in the spotlight and that they're working hard to get it done. <clears throat> and I'm grateful for your partnership. Well, you got it, all right? <laughs> 1,700 seats that are being offered by the Archdiocese, what are they being used for now in terms of the full day component? Tim, you want to jump in? Let's let Tim McNiff answer that. As you know, we've had uh, to close a number of schools over the last couple of years and right-size the system. So that created capacity for us from, from a building perspective that we're now ready to transition into UPK sites. On this. We're on this topic, this topic only. You bet. Sure, thanks for bringing that up. I couldn't have cued that better. These are, these are a couple reasons why we're, we are beaming because the spotlight is on education. I thank the mayor, I thank Governor Cuomo, and the two things that we find immensely promising would be the universal uh, pre-K and the partnership uh, that we've been encouraged to enter into, and the tuition uh, carpet tax credit, with which both Governor Cuomo and the mayor have expressed high interest in. And uh, seems a no-brainer no to us. The mayor and I talked about it about a month or so ago when we met. I know you didn't commit yourself, but you expressed very high interest in it, and I was grateful for that. So I don't know if there's any development. I yet. want you to know that the, the Cardinal is, uh, is perfectly found uh, the right field uh, for his life, the right vocation, but he could have been a great lawyer, too. And uh, so it, exactly correct. We met about this. We've talked about it. I am open to the discussion. I have not taken a formal stance, and I have not actually read the specific legislation. But clearly, we have um, tremendous common ground on the notion that uh, we have to serve our children more effectively. We have to reach more children. We have to reach more families. What united us immediately is we each have a flock, and we each feel the realities of the people we represent. And obviously, for both of us, if I may, I think we have such tremendous common interests. Catholic Charities is a big piece of the equation in terms of the social service work we do together. We've seen new opportunities to work together in terms of education. So there's a lot of common ground and a lot of recognition of the need out there. Uh, and we're going to keep working together on many fronts. Yes? You know, I, I think. The Cardinal said it best, the governor and, I, governor and I, beyond our personal friendship, which is you know, 20 years long almost, we agree on the need for pre-K to be a priority. I, I like to, uh, your eminence, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So I like to say, last year at this time, go back and look at the headlines, that we weren't talking about the need to make pre-K as crucial a part of our education system as we are today. And that's the blessing here, that now it's not a question of if any longer. It's just how are we going to get it done? And so my common ground with the governor is we both know we have to get something important done here. The dialogue is constant, as you saw when I was in Albany. I spent about an hour and a half with him. Um, and this is also the nature of the legislative process. Things take time. But there is a gathering consensus in this city and in this state that we must do this if we expect to repair our children uh, for their futures in a very different world. The Cardinal and I were talking about our childhoods. Um, we grew up in a very different time where maybe the demands were a little less and, and the need for this early start wasn't as sharp. But now, it's a game changer. It's necessary. Yes. Could you talk a bit about what sort of guidelines will be in place to ensure the separation of church and state? And could the Cardinal talk about what this might mean for struggling Catholic schools? Sure. The guidelines are the same as we're using right now. The um, Department of Education, the City Department of Education, works right now with the Archdiocese on pre-K programs, but in a very limited way. So we've already uh, resolved the issue of how to appropriately work together within a legal construct, and we found it to be perfectly workable, and it's a great partnership. But it's a very modest partnership. We want it to be a strong and big partnership. We know that we could get so much more done together. So those issues, I think, have been resolved up front. Now it's time to take the resources and deepen this partnership. 
Yeah, you're, you're right, Mayor. And you, listen, we've been doing this for a long time. We're, we never apologize for the fact that, uh, that, that faith animates what we do, but we don't proselytize. And uh, we welcome uh, children of all faiths or none at all. And they feel at home here. They feel safe there. And their parents respect the freedom and the faith and the character and the virtue that's part of it. As for the impact on Catholic schools, we're more uh, interested in the impact on the community and our kids. Dr. McNiff gave the mayor and me a, a wonderful statistic about when we get our children in pre-K, uh, very often they will remain within our system, which means a child that enters pre-K into one of our schools, 95% of them are gonna graduate from high school. And that is a stunning statistic, uh, which I presume makes uh, the cooperation with us uh, very magnetic and very appealing. So the impact, we're more concerned about the impact on the community, and most of all, upon our kids. <clears throat> and I wanna, credit the Cardinal and the Archdiocese, because if you go into the classrooms as we did, it is every kind of child from this city. And this is true throughout uh, the Catholic school system. It's uh, extraordinarily representative and inclusive. And I, I would say, uh, I will editorialize and say that I think uh, the sense of inclusion is profound, that there is a sense of mission of reaching every kind of child, including children who have the deepest needs. And that's something we honor and deeply appreciate, and that's something we think is very compatible with our vision. On this topic, anything else? On topic only in this case. Anything else on this? Yes. I ask you, um, the credentials that are currently required for teachers varies quite widely, such as in ACS programs. Um, how do you expect to get all those teachers to become high quality, teachers of high quality programs by September. It's a lot of teachers we're talking about that some of them only have a bachelor's degree. A couple of things, uh, you know, we are obviously in the plan we put forward, the white paper we put forward in January, we talked about additional training pieces we're putting into the equation, including for this summer, and ongoing training. But the most important fact when it comes to that question is what we indicated in the January white paper, that there's a, a very substantial number of available teachers right now. Every year, uh, the New York City Department of Education gets about 2,000 uh, applications for employment from teachers who are early childhood education certified. Uh, you'll remember there's been many years where there hasn't been uh, opportunities to hire new teachers. So there's a backlog of folks who have the training and have not been able to get an appropriate um, job opportunity. And we want to reach that uh, large pool of talented people and give them a chance to apply their early childhood training in this setting. So we think between the existing pool of people and folks who uh, can get some upgrade in time for September that we're going to have sufficient resources for the first wave that's September this year, again, we build out further into the 2015-2016 school year, uh, and that's when we bring the numbers up to 73,000 kids at full day. And in that time, we'll also have an opportunity to reach more talent, train more talent. One more thing I should add, we expect interest from around not just the city, not just the state, not just the tri-state area, but beyond. We think this is such an uh, important initiative. We think qualified teachers are going to want to come here. They're going to want to be a part of this. I, I'm going to refer to our icon, Ms. McCrory, uh, who is a true and renowned early childhood expert, and you can, you can validate me if you choose, that this is an exciting moment for early childhood teachers. Want to say a few words? It gives us the opportunity. Please. Um, we have partnered with a number of the universities, and we work with them on higher education and certification. So we're really uh, working hard to get certified teachers in our system. We have more people in early childhood than we have upper grades. That's correct. That's correct. Right. And I think this is, there, there's a passionate group of certified teachers who want to do this. And the fact that this city is committing on this big a scale is going to attract talent from all over to be a part of this. Got time for one more. Marsha. The, uh, New York uh, does it relate to this? Let's see you connect it to this, please. <laughs> I just wondered, you know, the, the charter school people continue to try to lobby for their point. Today there's a full page ad in the New York Times of kids, some of whom might be in pre-K. Ah, impressive connection point. <laughs> you too could be a lawyer. No, but I just wondered, you know, it, it, it seems like an ongoing campaign that they don't want to uh, take no for an answer, and I wonder if all of this pressure is making you change your views at all. Um, and, you know, 
if there's anything you'd like to say. Yeah, I appreciate that. Look. Threatening to do legal action. And well, it's a free country. It's a free country. People can do whatever they choose in a democratic society. Let's talk about what the decision we made, why we made it, and where we go from here. We had uh, 45 co locations uh, chosen by the Bloomberg administration, many of them just before they left office. Um, I think it was a rushed process. I think it would have been better to leave the new administration the opportunity to make those decisions according to the uh, plan we put forward. But since we received the 45 pending applications, we looked at them objectively. We came up with criteria. We said we did not want to put, for example, an elementary school in a high school building. That was what some of those applications would have done. We did not want to displace any special ed kids. That was very important to us. We did not want to take away seats from special ed kids. We had a set of criteria. When we applied those criteria, 36 of the 45, uh, in fact, met our criteria and we approved them. Uh, amongst the charter applications, I think it was 17 of those were charters. We approved 14 of the 17. So by definition, we have shown an open-mindedness and a willingness to work with everyone, and we continue to. We will work with charter schools. I've said it many, many times. There are some things I want to change in the approach from the previous administration. I say that respectfully. But I've always said that charter schools are part of the lineup and we want to work with them. And we have certain standards we want to achieve in, in terms of inclusiveness. As I said, this school system we're discussing here and the, the building we're in here is a model of inclusiveness. And I give uh, the Archdiocese tremendous credit, if it, whether it's special ed kids or English language learners who are a huge part of the population the Archdiocese serves in terms of the schools. All are welcome. That's the standard we want to hold in all uh, traditional public schools and all charter schools as well. And we think we can get there uh, and make that the common standard. Uh, but the bottom line is, in terms of what we're discussing today, uh, we welcome charter schools to be involved in U-Pre-K. They have to do it by law through affiliate organizations, but for example, Harlem Children's Zone is doing that right now, and we welcome additional applications from charter schools that want to create an affiliate organization and do pre-K. We welcome charter schools to be part of our after-school effort, and that's something we've said publicly, and by the way, a lot of the charter organizations have embraced that. A number of the charter organizations said that they think our effort to create a uh, full day pre-K across the board is important for the future of New York City public schools, and they're part of that same system. They think after school is important for the future, and they're part of that same system, and they want to be constructive allies in that, and we welcome their involvement. So I think um, as more people get to hear all the facts, uh, we'll get back to the work of working together, and I look forward to that. Thank you, everyone.